Do you want to know how we make our stencils for our projects? Well today we're going to show you how we make ours using this wooden palette sign. Okay, so while Garrett's outside working on the palette sign, we will cut the stencil to put on the palette sign. So this sign is 36 inches wide and 14 inches tall. Our Cricut will only cut either a 12 by 12 mat or 12 by 24, but we need something larger than that. So we're gonna cut our project into two sections. We're gonna first cut our large H on the 12 by 12 mat at 11 and a half by 11 and a half, and then we're gonna cut It's Good to Be Home it's good to be um on the 12 by 24 mat. Let's get started. I have the images already built and downloaded in Design Space. We're gonna upload those images for you on our website and you can download and use the cut files right on your Cricut to make the same stencil at home. All right, so let's get into it. Okay, here we are in Design Space. Like I said, we have the these cut files and two cut files. The first one is the H and it's going on the 12 by 12 mat at 11 and a half by 11 and a half. And we are using the Carlington font. So from the here, all I did was type an H, resize it. Now we're gonna click make it. Here it is on our mat in design space. And we already have the vinyl prepped on our mat. Okay, so we have in design space, we already have it ready to go. We're just gonna load our mat. and click continue and we'll choose our material which is vinyl pressure we'll use a default pressure and i'll put it in fast mode press the flash and go button And that is it. Press unload and dismiss on our screen. You probably can't see it, but now the H has been cut. So next step, it's good to be ohm. We'll switch our files in design space. And here we Included our text, it's good to be, is in the typewriter font, and OME is in the Carlington font as well. But in order to get these to cut exactly as they're displayed on the screen, you'll need to weld the images together, which I've already done here on my screen. At this point, all we have to do is click make it. Double check your mat. Here it says, it warns you that you're going to need a larger mat, which we do, we have the 24 inch mat. And you'll see everything looks as it's supposed to be on the mat. We'll just hit continue. Set our material as vinyl. Load the mat. and press the go button. Oh, hey, what's up? Hey, well, Kim's doing her thing. I'm just having a snack. Kim's doing the cricket thing. I'm gonna make the little wall art piece that we're gonna put it on. We're gonna need two one by fours and a one by two. One by two we're just using in the back to tack them all together. Kim said it needs to be four boards tall and 36 inches wide. So we're just gonna trim them out real quick. All right, I got my four boards cut. I'm gonna do a general measure of how long two by one by two should be. All right, I made three tack strips. I'm gonna break my glue. And we're gonna tack it down. All right, that's it. 
That's it, now we're just gonna give it a rough sand, just enough to accept the stencil. The stencil's a sticker. Son of a bitch! It's like tie-dye. Alright, now I'm just waiting on the stencil. Get Next step, you have to do what's called weeding. I will take out the inside of the image where the stencil or the paint will be. Waiting on Kim with the stencil. Oh, hey babe. Have your stencil right here. Oh. We have cut out our letters and then we have weeded them, meaning we took the insides out so that we can use the rest of this as a stencil. Next step is to add transfer tape. This is clear tape. Comes in longer sheets, but this is all I have. You lay this over top and then you can peel the whole thing off. So let me show you how to do that. Now, if you want to hold the top for me, that would be super helpful. It's 321 Contact, also electric, electric company? company. I think you might be right. Yes. I'm gonna have to look that up. I'll let you guys know. <laughs> if 321 Contact and Electric Company were the same thing. Or if you know, comment and let us know. Yeah. Okay. I'll hold my fingers here so they don't use them. The other hard part, maybe this is the hardest part, is now we have to get the vinyl off of its backing and leave it stuck to the transfer tape. But the trick is just getting the vinyl off of the backing. Okay, so now I'm keeping like the center of the O. I have to make sure the center of the O stays attached. See how I've done this upside down? This is the, the best way to do it. And the best way to do it is to peel it back tight. You don't wanna just lift up. You gotta peel, roll it back. Roll it back. Yep, and if it comes up a little bit, you just push it back. Way back. Lay it down. Like we're gonna fly paper. Very sticky for sure. Sticker! Sticker town. Right there. Right there. Alright, you want to take your two fingers and line that up? Can you see while I hold this up? Right there. Okay. Smooth it down. Rub it out. Now what we want to do is make sure that this is stuck down, that there are no bubbles around any letters, so that the paint doesn't bleed under the letters. And then once we do that, 
we will take out the transfer tape. All right, so next step is to peel off the transfer tape. We'll start here in the middle since it was already coming up. Again, you don't want to lift because you don't want it to pull your stencil up. You want to slide it back. And this is reusable, so I'm going to put it right back on its little tube. Boom. Put it back on its own. Oh, put it on its own. So we overlapped the H and the O so that the H will flow right into the O, the cursive O. And Garrett is helping me cut out the overlap parts. So I'll hold it up. Now we have the stencil attached. We'll make sure there are no puckers. Like I see on this angle, I can see some puckers in the letters. I need to make sure everything is down nice and tight before I add the paint. So the stencil's down. I made sure everything is, every letter is attached, adhered all the way around so that hopefully we get no paint bleed. And we're going to use this ivory chalk paint and just fill in the stencil. You get help? Chalk it up. Chalk it up. Now I have learned that it's best to use a fairly dry brush and we're just gonna dab it like that right no not like that yes like that okay so you want to let this dry for about one or two minutes, but not fully, not let, don't let it dry completely because if the paint dries and it pull, the stencil could potentially pull the paint up with it when you peel the stencil off. So you want to leave the paint just a little bit wet when you pull the stencil off. Okay, it's been two minutes, so we're going to peel it back and see how we did. tools to weed the insides. Okay, stencils removed. I've decided that it's good to be is a little bit low on that crack. So I think next time, I think you can cut it all on the same stencil, but I would cut out this section and place it maybe just above the crack. I think it'll look a little nicer, but it looks pretty good. And that was your Cricut tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed our project today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And thanks for joining us.